countdown to the last comic shop in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Ha! Uh, maybe that was the wind. No, 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 the door does work. It is opening. Just no one's coming in. Just me. By myself. Oh, boy. Okay, so uh, welcome to the last comic shop, everyone. Why am I talking to an empty shop? I feel stupid. Anyways, I'm the host, the only host, J.A. Scott. It's going to be a fun show. Uh, well, it looks like uh, I've got the shop to myself this week. So, yeah. Does anybody want to do a book club on Petersburg by Andre Belay? The great novel of the 20th century by the Russian novelist? No? No? Okay. Um, I think, I think, yes. I think there's some, there's a show in the can. So I'm going to have to go downstairs. If you come with me, again, I'm talking to myself. And we'll fire up the Rama 3000. I believe that we've got a show in the can from Live Stream to the Cure. I wasn't there. So, like you, I'll be listening to it for the first time. But Andrew and Chad and Mikey Wood and George from Short Box Summary got together and talked Batman vs. Hulk, which should be a good show, um, I guess. We'll find out. But I, to be honest, I mean, it's just... Batman plus time equals win, right? Can you hear him um, talking? There he is. There he the is. See this guy. You want to see him? He's handsome. That's right. <laughs> I was telling him all about who we are, so so you could do a better job of it. Hi, so uh, hey, welcome to the last comic shop. Thanks, Nick, for bringing us back this year. We love the live stream for the Cures, for sure. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah, we are a comic book podcast. We read, we review comic books. We've got a great one today, a classic from 1981 that we'll get into that features Batman and the Hulk at the same time. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I'm the host with the most, Andy Larson. Again, I'm joined by my regular co-host, Chad Smith, as well as Mikey Wood, a fantastic comic book artist and creator from the Pittsburgh area that's been on a multitude of shows. And of course... We wouldn't want to forget about our wonderful friend, George, from Short Box Summary. Make sure you're checking out his podcast as well. Short Box Summary, we've been on that show. He's been on our show. It is a a team up of epic proportions, (laughs) and we're glad that he's on to help us out with the live stream for The Cure today. So, that being said, I do have some business before we get to that comic book, and that is to make sure that everybody knows that we have some giveaways. That's right. This hour, if you are going to be the top two donators uh, during this particular hour, we are going to send you some Last Comic Shop merch. That's right. You can get this awesome logo. This is our Magnum PI kind of Hawaiian, you know, summary thing, which is nice. But we also got other wonderful things like this one that's drawn by Mikey Wood of all of us hanging out at the bar. Look at that. You can Mm. also... You know, we'll send it in a tank top if you, you know, one of the ladies out there. I thought that was a thong at first. (laughs) It can be. I think that's called the Razorback. Yeah, I think that's what they they call that. Or, you know, if you are, you know, one of those top two and you live in the continent of the United States, I do have to say that. We (laughs) unfortunately can't ship to like, you know, Australia or something, but uh, we've also got a nice hoodie. So, like, if you want a hoodie, you can also get the hoodie with the last comic shop logo, as well as the following. Because we're doing verses during this segment, uh, if you donate $5 like we did last year, you can throw out two people that you want us to talk about, about who would win in a versus battle <laughs> between yeah. these two people. Two well, fictional characters. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> they can be uh, comic book characters. They can be mm. movie characters. As long as we... Have a decent idea. Five dollars that buys you at least some mirth for a few seconds. That's right. Okay, so Batman versus the Incredible Hulk. That is our segment of live stream for the Cure, and because uh, again, it's, it comes in its collection 
of you know late 70s early 80s team ups that like marvel and dc back when they were playing nice which if you're ever at a comic book shop make sure that you're trying to look out for this this actually is a great collection of four of those stories so you would get superman and the amazing spider-man then amazing spider-man and superman those were two different books then you get this uh, batman hulk one and of course then lastly chad's favorite which is x-men teen titans which mm. we covered on the last comic shop podcast mm. but uh this is my favorite of all the books really? how do i say this? it has wonderful art because it was done by Ho, Ho, um, Jose, Jose. Jose Luis Garcia Lopez. <laughs> Sometimes a little bit hard to roll off the tongue. Bien hecho, uh, Andy. Bien hecho. Well done. Yeah. <laughs> for um, those folks that may not know, he was basically the guy that came up with how all of the DC characters should look in the early 80s to, you know, when they were doing marketing. So, like, you've seen his Batman or his Superman or his mm-hmm. Wonder Woman mm-hmm. on any of that marketing. Super mm-hmm. Friends, Under Ruse, all that stuff features Jose uh, Luis Garcia Lopez art. He's one of those masters of the craft. And you actually don't get a ton of books done completely by him. And so mm. uh, it's something special. Yes. And it's, uh, it's written by Len Wein, who, um, for those folks that may or may not know, the creator of Wolverine one of the most famous comic book characters of all time. That's a Len Wein creation. Did he create Swamp Thing? Yes. Yeah. Ah! It's like I'm on a comic book podcast. Yes. <laughs> yes. He was a very, very prolific writer. He, we, we unfortunately lost him a couple years mm-hmm. back, uh, but I'm really glad that he wrote this particular book because I love it. And we'll get to why I love it in just a second. But we have George on today's program from Short Box Summary. If you've never listened to his podcast, one of the wonderful things he likes to do is put comic books in context. So what he'll do is he'll say, like, these are other things that were released around the same time as the comic. And I was going to say, now, George, your podcast, Short Box Summary, you deal in a particular time frame. Uh, Why don't you tell the audience about that? I do, yeah. I got really into comics in the mid-2000s, so this podcast is all about me going back and figuring out if those books were good or if I was 15. So I get to revisit all my favorites, and I get to talk about the music that was coming out, the movies that were coming out, the TV shows that were on. And I just think that's it's really important to know like what else was happening, because like we talked about Brian Michael Bendis' uh, Daredevil run like on your show, Last Comic Shop, and like I think that show was hugely influenced by The Wire, and I don't think enough people talk about what everyone else is consuming when they're creating these books and so mm-hmm. i try to do that heck yeah and that's one of our favorite parts of your show and so we thought why don't we take one of our favorite parts of your show and take you totally out of your comfort zone <laughs> <laughs> and instead of dealing with something from the early 2000s we're going to take you back all the way back well, we don't want to reveal too much but you were mm-hmm. in the negative age bracket at this point <laughs> this i sure out. was yeah i was not alive in 1981 when this came out um i did i did some more research than i normally do this this book cost 250 in 1981 do you have any idea how much that is in today's dollars oh geez mm-hmm. uh, you're not making me do math man Four, i didn't know that 495 i'm gonna say 899 uh, uh, 10 uh, bucks it was eight eight dollars and thirty four cents in today's dollars. Wow! Which, wow. which doesn't I, seem that bad. I feel like I, I buy a lot of stuff from Marvel and DC that are uh, around eight dollars, like seven ninety nine. I feel like that's a yeah. A, one of those variant covers or something like that. Sometimes you spend that much. Yeah, that's yeah, that's, for, that's pennies for sure. Uh, this book also came out during the last season of the CBS Incredible Hulk show. Okay, with uh, Bill Bixby and uh, Lou Ferrigno. Let's see, Billboard Hot One Hundred. Number 10, starting up the Rolling Stones. Ooh, yeah, that's yeah, a good yeah. one. Number nine, Maybe You Bring Me Up by Commodores. Number eight, Step by Step, Eddie Rabbit. Seven, Arthur's theme, Best That You Can Do by Christopher Cross. Different than Criss Cross from my generation. <laughs> yeah, um, he didn't wear his pants backwards. Did not wear his pants backwards. <laughs> I, I, hey, I put on Salem when I'm mowing my lawn. It takes me to a tropical paradise instead of just being... He's all into the Yacht Rock. That's, 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 that's great. That's great. My, I love my Yacht Rock. I wear the boat shoes. It's fine. It's wiggity, 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 whack is what it is. Yeah, my crisscross oh. is still cooler. I, I don't know that's what to right, say. It is. Sorry. Uh, number six, Who's Crying Now? Journey. Ooh, what a breakup song. Number five, There's No Getting Over Me uh, by Ronnie Millsap. Four, Urgent, Foreigner. Number three, stop trying oh, my heart around Stevie Nicks with Tom Teddy and the Heartbreakers. Number two, Queen of Hearts, Juice Newton. And number one, 
on Billboard's Hot 100 to round out September 1981. Endless Love by Diana Ross. Oh, and Lyle. God. Yes. Oh, God. yes. <laughs> Endless Love. Just Endless put this love. on. Mm. I'll, I'll draw myself a bubble bath. It'll be fine. I'll just enjoy myself. You know. people, people from my generation will know that movie from Happy Gilmore because that's the song they play at the ice rink in that's the right. dark. Oh, yeah. there you go. That's right. um, but you do have movies for us, and I think that was... Oh, buddy, I've, I've got movies, I've got <laughs> TV shows, I've got cartoon debuts, and I've got famous celebrities born. I went all out. Mm, this is cool. okay. this is live lay, stream lay it on us, brother. Pure, lay know? it on us. All right. Uh, so let's start with TV shows. The number one show... Mm. With a 28.4% market share. Dallas. That means 28% of all people who could were watching it. Dallas was number one. Uh, I told you! Yeah. That, that's like Barbara Bel Geddes. She was like front and center was, on it. This was prime who shot JR. It is. Was, I was going to ask if they killed the guy from uh, Bewitched. Maybe, maybe you're somewhere around there, but yeah. No, that's. Uh, it's, um, I was in college when this. When uh, I Dream a Genie. I, I Dream a Genie. There that's you go. That's where. Okay. Going. I was like, I didn't know Dick Sargent or Sergeant York were on that show. It's I Dream of Genie. Dick Sergeant is the best I didn't, name. I think he stopped for, for getting both of the dicks. I was, I was a big Nick at Night fan as a kid. Um, let's see, number two, 60 Minutes. Number three, The Jeffersons. Number four, Three's Company. Number five, Alice. Number six, The Dukes of Hazard. Number seven, Too Close for Comfort. Number eight, The ABC Monday Night Movie. Okay. Nice. Wow. Not not a specific one, just that yeah. programming class. Any movie? That's fine. Yeah, any we'll take any movie. That's our number eight. Yeah. I watched so many James Bond movies on those Sunday night movies. Yeah. Like well, well, during COVID, I remember they brought it back and they did like Raiders of the Lost Ark was like mm-hmm. the first one they did. Yeah. yeah. See, number nine, uh, MASH, number ten, one day at a time. And just just to show you where we are, number eleven is Monday Night Football. The eleventh most popular program in nineteen eighty one, which Yeah. When wow, did football funny. take over? And then take over all the days. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I want to say the 90s? Like, uh, is that when? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 donuts. 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 What do we get? Uh, hang on, guys. Sorry. Dan, uh, leave yeah. me alone. <laughs> uh, Chris Yaney, $21.49. Best or worst universe? And he's asking you guys that. Oh, oh the best or worst universe? Um, like, 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 I guess just what's for me best personally, worst, yeah. yeah, go ahead. For Mikey. me personally, I, I would say the nineties vertigo Sandman books of magic swamp thing that, because it was, it was technically considered separate from the DC universe, Hellblazer and all that other stuff. That's my personal favorite era and, and world of comics. Okay. So. What's your, what's your least favorite then, Mikey? <laughs> Um, well, yeah, see, I have, I have, I, I, I'm not lying. I have every new universe comic that they put out. Wow, <laughs> and it's not great, but they're not horrible. But they're not great. It was what Jim Shooter eventually perfected it with Valiant. He really did. Yeah. Like honestly, they're just like maybe. Dry ones. But but other than that, yeah, I, uh, yeah, they took out Pittsburgh in that one. Chad, what, what's your favorite? Oh, uh, geez, um, can, can I cheat and just say like '60s, '70s Marvel universe? Yeah, why not? That's the Can best one. You know, the heroes at their their essence before everybody started changing and get all modernized. George, your favorite? Uh man, I'm gonna get so much flack for this, but I love the Ultimate Universe, man. There is so much oh, wrong with that. Man. Yeah. yeah. I, it's such a weird time for comics because it's like everything Marvel sixties was like all atomic age stuff, right? And everything right. Marvel two thousands was all digital age stuff, and it just felt like a like an actual like how about we modernize this in a big way Mm -hmm. and very huge soft spot for the ultimate universe i tell you what when the ultimate universe books were good they were great yeah when they were bad that was a lot of the time oh man i'm still mad i'm still mad about whatever that book was that jeff david that one yeah ultimate (laughs) Ultimate three it's so weird because i was so excited because jeff loeb is like a quality writer yeah but man that didn't they're not all hits and that 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 was like uh, well, my favorite has got to be uh, this the shared universe we're talking about today. The, the, these DC Marvel, anytime DC and Marvel crossover with each other, that's like that's the best of both worlds. That's the favorite universe I've got to have. Least favorite universe has got to be when they took Fantastic Four and X Men and they what the, what, the new he, universe. The, what, the, no, the, the, hero, the, heroes, heroes, heroes born. Born. Hey, 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 hey! <laughs> that was fun. It was Captain America with a huge. Ch- Oh, well, come on. 
Yeah. <laughs> no, I, they I, gave him a little flag up there. It was yeah, wonderful. Hit, it was hit the wonderful. gym, Andy. You could look like that, too. Come on, man. <laughs> you could. You Just could. kind of sideways. Yeah. It'll be all right. That's right. All right. So uh, we, we hit TV shows. Let's real quickly get to movies, and then we'll get into our 10 cent synopsis of today's book. So right. movies and, like, this celebrity thing you got. All What's right. going on there, Jim? Movies. Let, let's start with celebrities. Uh, Ashley Eckstein was, was born September 1981. She voices Ahsoka Tano on like, Star Wars Clone Wars and Rebels. Oh, uh, very cool. Oh, man, I'm a huge Ahsoka fan. She rules. Uh, let's see, Ben Schwartz, uh, known as John Paul Raffio from Parks and Rec. Yes. And Sonic the, the worst! <laughs> <laughs> the worst! JTT, Jonathan Taylor Thomas himself born. Oh, man. September 1981. He just wants to be king. And it's so weird. The number one most important person, celebrity-wise, born September 1991, Beyonce Knowles. The wow! Queen. The Queen Bee. Yeah. Man. Wow. I still, I still love her music. All I the planets aligned, and there was an earth-shattering rumble, and she came <laughs> forth out of the womb of the Great Mother. That's amazing. <laughs> With her uh, hair perfectly done and everything. That's right. Yeah, I remember that's right. the day I first heard Bootylicious, and I was just like, okay, I'm done. Put a fork yeah. in me. There's no greater song. <laughs> yeah. I'm done. What a, it's fine. What a, to, what a way to pop, yeah. Uh, let's see. September 1981, uh, the Smurfs debuted. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. And that was yeah. that and Disney on Ice sometime in 1981. There Those is a two big absolutely premieres. terrifying episode of the Smurfs. I think it was a Christmas special. Where Gargamel like sells his soul to get like ultimate power and like just to destroy the Smurfs village. Wow, <laughs> really creepy. Just scared the bejesus out of me. Mm. Just, just just go on vacation, man. Take a few days Smurfs for yourself. Will do that. You don't get you that know. with Snorks, right? Yeah. Smurfs, yeah. Yeah. Gargamel was trying to eat them. Like in every yeah. episode, like because you get power to... from them. You get, you get power. From them. It, it's not a show for kids. It's, I don't know. <laughs> you really think about it. Anyways, movies. movies. Movies, movies, movies. September 81 itself, kind of a slow month. Like, the biggest movies were, like, Continental Divide, Body Heat, and Chariots of Fire. But mm-hmm. 81, huge for movies. Mm-hmm. We got Superman 2. Ooh. Yes. Neil before us all. That is the best Superman movie out there. Do you Dude, like the, the Donner what, cut or the original? I was going to say, which the version? Donner, the Donner cut. Uh, Donner except for the good. end. Except for the tail end, because it's just the same thing. Right. Yeah. It's like it should have been Superman, comma T O O, and they should have had like another Superman come in. <laughs> and they, you know, they they, they, they should have just kept on making. Like they should have never taken Richard Donner off of that. I know that they they filmed them back to back or at the same time or whatever. They should just dr- made three and four because there's like a significant drop off between two and three. Well, yeah, just a little baby bit, a little little, 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 he- little huge bit. Uh, let's see what else. Eighty one stripes came out in nineteen eighty one. Classic Bill Murray. I wish I had that RV. That RV was like the mm-hmm. best. That, those are two different movies. Like the first half of that movie and the second half of that movie. Two completely separate movies. The boot camp stuff is hilarious. I'm like, oh cool, this is like watching Full Metal Jacket except I don't feel miserable inside. And then the second half is like, alright, I guess Bill Murray will fight World War Three in a in a Winnebago, like yeah, sure, like, something. Sure, I, I John Larroquette's great in that movie. He really is. Like, and John Candy steals John the show Candy's every incredible. single time he's he on. Yeah, I love. First that. time I learned about Jello wrestling or mud wrestling, I can't remember which one, but I, I learned yeah. about one of them. And- oh, my dad took me to the to the theater to see it. I was eight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, fabulous. I saw Starship Troopers when I was eight, so that's just generations, nice. you know. Like that's yeah. All right, right, what else right, do we got, right. real quick? For your eyes only, the Cannonball Run, Excalibur, another formative youth movie where people might have had to leave the room. Uh, an American Werewolf in London, Halloween 2, and probably most importantly, I think for us to speak, Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yeah, like, oh that, that, was a, that was a big watershed moment, right. I think, for I mean, a lot if of people here. Sure. Yeah, what, what an 81. Good grief. Mm-hmm. Early 80s Fabulous. in general. So many great movies. Yeah. And then, yeah, and then yeah. you get this comic book. So mm-hmm. let's get into the 10 cents synopsis. I'm going to give it for everybody. As you may or may not know on the last comic shop, we like to educate you on comic books. Not only are we going to talk a little bit about this, but we are going to educate you on what actually happens in this brick's awesome issue. Batman and Hulk. Look at that. I I do regret, though, I don't have the treasury format that it originally appeared in. Yes, that is very expensive. If you ever come across that at flea market. Did you want to remind everyone, too, the prizes that are up for the donations as they roll in? What are you guys giving away again? Let's let everyone just Oh, absolutely. We are giving away some T-shirts. So make sure that if you are in the continental United States and you want one of the last comic shop T-shirts, make sure that you're the top two donators. You can get in a variety of colors and styles. 
Look at that. Tank tops, things, yep. all mm-hmm. kinds of stuff. So right nice. now, 22 bucks gets you a t-shirt. Tote if you, bags. If what you, you want, want a thong, thong, we can make that happen, I guess. <laughs> yeah, and give you the, dent- the dental floss special. You know, yeah, we can do it. We can where's do the it. logo on the thong? Is it like Some people thong? may want it. It's okay. <laughs> It's how limber are you? <laughs> well, you guys, you guys talk about Conan a lot, so it'd be pretty in keeping to have like a un- underwear loincloth set. Sure, yes. yeah. Speaking of, that's the size difference for the Conan. treasury version. Yeah. Oh, well, that is a treasury edition. Yes. So it this is. is this is how big the the book was originally, and then this is the reprint. Which mm-hmm. again, you should find if you can find this reprint, you should pick it up. But long story short, the ten cent synopsis is the Joker is trying to save. This intergalactic creature called the Shaper of Worlds. Awesome name. Even cooler look. Because he looks like half robot, half Skrull, if you know what a Skrull is. Um, But simply put, he is going crazy because the only thing he can do is really create people's dreams. And so, like, he's, I don't know, something happened. He's there. And the Joker is deciding, like, he's going to help him. Because if he does help him, the Shaper of Worlds give him ultimate power. So he goes to a gamma research facility and he's trying to steal this gamma gun that will help the uh, the Shaper of Worlds reconstitute it, it, itself. And while he's there, it just happens that uh, Bruce Banner is working there. And it happens to also be owned by Wayne Enterprises. So this is how this all kind of connects together. Ties together. And so the Joker shows up. He tries to steal this gun. Bruce Banner turns into the Hulk. Uh, the Joker actually convinces him that Batman is, bad, is a bad guy and the Hulk and Batman fight for a little while. And then sooner or later, Joker does get ultimate power and yes. tries to recreate the universe, but Batman stops him. In a very Batman-esque way. I actually, that's one of my favorite parts about this book is that basically Joker is given godlike powers uh, and Batman's like, okay. Just keeps on trying to one up the Joker. He's like, mm-hmm. you can do better, Joker. Yeah. You can do better. Like, you think this is crazy? Let's get real nuts. And eventually, the Joker just has too many thoughts. Like, he just he, he has too much power and too many things he wants to wish for, and he ends up just just losing his brains. Like, yeah. Yeah. what else do you say? Then Batman yeah. knocks him out. Yeah, game okay. over. Kapow. Yeah. <laughs> and it's it's a very very classic Batman, and that's why I really love this. I mean, mm-hmm. it, whether you are six or sixty, this is a Batman that you can kind of get behind. Honestly, it is. It's uh, not only drawn in that very classic style with the big flowing cape and the nice, you know, wonderful, you know, cow with the nice ears and everything like that, but you also get a really classic Hulk. Mm. And um, again, it's not too heady. It's not too dark. As, as Mikey, I think, points out, he thinks it's more like a hostess ad. Yeah, Mikey. yeah, it's this, this. Yeah, it's like it's like a sixty-page hostess Twinkies ad, like they used to have in the comics, you know. Um, but like, it, it's also this is not my favorite era of comics. I know, like you guys get on me all like the, this is still kind of Bronze Agey. It's really silly, like it's super silly. But it's charming, though. It is charming and wonderful, and that's the appeal to it. If I read it in 1981, I would have probably thought it was just the bee's knees. But me being a snob, I read it now, and I'm like, this is... With your verse. <laughs> I'm so, I am. I'm super snob. But, like, it's like, this is this is so silly. Like, I'm reading it, and I'm just like, this is so silly. But I do like how uh, they don't bother messing with... How are these universe crossing over? There's no kind of portal. There's no. It's the same as X Men Teen Titans, which is infinitely better, by the way. But um, <laughs> and I think it's the same with Superman Spider Man too. They just happen to exist in the same world, right? It's, exactly. They don't waste any time with that kind of stuff. They don't. They're aware of each other somehow. Bruce Wayne, well, because he's Batman. Bruce Wayne knew that Bruce Banner. Two Bruces. Bruce and Bruce. Hey, Bruce. What's up, Bruce? It's like an Australian, <laughs> you know, Bruce and Bruce. But they, um, he knows that he's the Hulk. I wasn't reading Hulk. I never read Hulk, but I, I never, re- I wasn't familiar with Hulk at the time. But it reads in the beginning, Hulk at the time was like the television series. It right. felt, it felt very much like that. Yeah, We're calling Robert Bruce me. Banner. Banner, you know. he has to be somebody else to disguise himself to get a yeah, job. Right. He's getting right. yeah, getting odd jobs throughout the which, you know, apparently you could do back then because they didn't have background checks. I don't know. But, but that's the, one of the strengths of the book is things like the fact that like uh, immediately upon, you know, Bruce Wayne finding out that Bruce Banner's at one of his, you know, companies like gives him a job. 
Why? Because that's a perfectly reasonable thing for Batman to do. He's yeah. Like, I want to mm-hmm. keep tra- tabs on yes. Bruce Banner and the Hulk. Mm-hmm. It actually makes me think like why they never did that at Marvel earlier. Like you never had like that issue where like, you know, Tony Stark offers Bruce Banner a job, even though that's become commonplace nowadays. And like yeah. in the MCU movies, like you would think that like Iron Man would just want to keep tabs on Bruce Banner and be like, Bruce, why don't you come work with me? So you know, I can help you. No, so, it never happens. You, you brought up something funny because MCU, like MCU wise, they don't have secret identities, do they? Like everybody knows really. who everybody is in, yeah. in the MCU. In the yeah. MCU. <laughs> See, back then it was like Batman knew that Bruce Banner was the Hulk. And I don't know how, they don't explain that unless it's because he saw him change into him, which I don't, but then a whole room of people did. And they're just kind of like, I wonder if like he came into work on Monday morning and they're all like, Oh, that's the guy that turned into that freaking green guy. <laughs> like if they're like, in the, if they're in the lunchroom and they're like, shit, he's got a hot pocket. Just back up. We don't know. <laughs> if he burns himself. We're screwed. Yeah. He's going to tear uh, a hole through the yeah. wall. And, oh God. You know. No one tell him not to microwave fish. We right. Like, is it an that. HR? Like, <laughs> like, do you get like a right? Do you get an official write up from HR? If you turn into a green hulking beast and like, oh, I'm sure you do. There's yeah. got, there's got to be certain, is, you know, is Susan like, did you come that. in and see me in my office? David, no, dude, you, you, you get, David you get, was his you name get on bounced TV out show. of there like a basketball. And then Seriously. like, unless your gamma gun gets right. stolen and he <laughs> happens to be the foremost <laughs> expert in gamma radiation, in which case it's like, wow, this is super convenient. But no, dude, you get you get fired so fast. Are you kidding? I got fired for being 15 minutes late to an art supply store that I worked at. This guy <laughs> tore up a laboratory <laughs> of top secret. And, and Bruce is like, you know what? Let me get you a job. You know, I wonder if he would have to take a personal day or a sick day when he's hulking. Exactly. Out. What is that? <laughs> What's what, do you do? what do you do? And he wasn't wearing who you are. If you're Hulk turning into Banner, that's kind of more of a. And where does he find all of the purple pants? There's a, <laughs> where there's a store, please. Does he find them? Yeah. Remember in the cartoon, in the Saturday Morning Hulk cartoon that was on around this time? Yeah. He would turn back into Banner in his pants. With his clothes on. Pants it again. Yeah, make yeah. no sense to his me pants as a kid. Would turn I'm like, and a tie, too? No. Yeah. In any case, let's move on to George, because this, this is the first time he's actually read this book. Mm-hmm. Usually re- or he's reading comic books like post-2000. So, mm-hmm. George, did you like this book? Did you not like this book? What did you think? I was so mad when I opened it and I saw how many words there were. And I was just like, <laughs> oh, this is like everything I don't like about 60s books. This is everything I kind of don't like about 70s books. Like, I just feel like they're so overridden. But something mm-hmm. about this book, there's so many words on the page, but like it never, I never felt like I was being slowed down. Honestly, there were some parts where I'm just like, oh, I don't actually know like which panel to read next. But this is back in that era where they would do like the, the chubby little arrows pointing and like telling you where to go for like mm-hmm. the especially confusing compositions. Mm-hmm. And uh, this book was really good, man. Like I, I had a lot of fun reading this. I think this is like, this probably isn't the Batman I see when I close my eyes, but it's like, one of the three best Batman designs, I think, of all time. I usually default to like animated series Batman, uh, just in turn, like that is how my Batman looks. But like, there's just something about this book that feels from impossibly far away, like time wise, and then also incredibly modern at the same time. Like it's mm-hmm. it's like especially timeless. I, I don't understand how they were able to pull that off in '81, which was such a stilted time otherwise right. in mm-hmm. a lot of uh, culture. I was going to say, this is my Batman. As a child of the 80s, this is what Batman looked like. With that utility belt with little capsules there. When Batman busts out the mouthpiece uh, so he can breathe underwater. Mm-hmm. Like, that happened all the time in the comics. Yellow, yellow oval around the bat. That, exactly. <clears throat> this is, you know, pre-1986 and Dark Knight Returns. And it was Batman was just Batman. He could do whatever he wanted. But, uh, no, I love this team up, too, because as Mikey was alluding to, they don't mess around when it comes to, you know, how is this happening? Like, no, they have a conceit where there's the shaper of worlds that can do whatever it is that he wants. And, and then they just play around with it. And you not only get tons of action scenes with Batman and the Hulk, you also get a team up between Batman and the Joker. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this is a great Joker, too, because, again, I, I'm not a, a huge fan of, like, the completely psychotic Jokers. Honestly, that gets that gets old a little bit early. In any book, you're like, no... I like a cold, calculating Joker. I, I actually like my favorite Joker is the one you get from the animated series, like the the Mark Hamill Joker, where he's kind of a mobster, got that gangster cred, like he, he runs the underworld, he knows how to you know rob banks and things like that. He's a real good tactician for this, and that's you know one of the things that I do when I read this particular book is I hear Mark Hamill 
when the Joker speaks. Because the way that the dialogue kind of runs, and hopefully all of you will pick this up, if you read the dialogue, it sounds very much like what Mark Hamill would say. It's There's a little bit of the, the insanity underneath, but it's like complete sentences. It's very well written. So it's Here nice. comes the money! Hey! Here comes the money! All right, let's see what we got here. Hello, there's a Okay. Alluvial dampeners? No, no, that's not it. Get me the hydro spammers. Oh, again, I'm talking to myself. Anyways, I'm trying to fix this stupid machine. I don't know why Andrew can't invest in some WD-40. We'll get you back to the show. Uh, if you want to support Cancer Research, obviously there'll be another live stream to the cure next year. But in the meantime, you can go to supportcancerresearch.org. It's got a list of various organizations within your country that are doing good work to try to find a cure for cancer. Greetings, ghouls and boils. I'm the Ghoul Master, a loving homage to horror anthology narrators of yesteryear. Wait, I'm an homage? Why didn't anybody tell me? You'll hear from my agent about this. But first, let's get to the heart of the matter. I'm here to tell you about the new horror anthology, Memoirs of the Morbid, on Kickstarter in time for Halloween. Memoirs of the Morbid is a black and white homage to classic horror comics from the 40s and 50s, containing five self-contained stories by some of the best indie comic creators out there. There's that word again. I better not find out homage is an insult. Anyways, Memoirs of the Morbid is completely done and ready to go to the printer. So don't make a grave mistake by missing it. Hey, are you looking for your new favorite comic? Are you interested in epic fights, a career change, creating comics and mental health? You have come to the right place. My name is Oscar Osorio, and up until a few months ago I was working at a desk for a big company, until I burned out and decided to pursue my passion, comic books. It was the beginning of my new, better life, at least that's what I thought. Turns out that doing what you love may involve newer mental health issues, worrying about getting money, feeling you're not enough, fear of disappointment, and more. So I combined these emotions with my love of superheroes and fan comics and turned it into my debut comic book, A Neverending Adventure the fantastic quest of an aspiring creator looking for an idea. Life on soup, right now. So come with me as I embark on the never-ending adventure of creation. Hey, it's Mikey Wood, frequent Last Comic Shop guest and collector. And as a collector, I'm always in need of boards, bags, long boxes, and more to house all those comics. That's why I use promo code LCSPOD to get 10% off my orders at bcwsupplies.com. Not only does it get me a discount on BCW's already low prices, but I know using LCSPOD at checkout is another way I can show my support to the Last Comic Shop podcast and their continuing mission to bring fans together under that big comic book tent. So if you're in need of comic book supplies, Head out to bcwsupplies.com and use promo code LCSPOD today. That's LCSPOD. And now, back to the show. Come on, freaking thing work. All right. And then Fine. Batman gets abusive and starts smacking him around. Get out of your crap, Joker. <laughs> Pasty faced. But I, I do have to get, as in the interest of time, to my favorite reason this book exists. I mean, again, this is one of my top 10 comic books of all time, single issues wise. And it is because of one particular panel. And it's the second fight between Batman and the Hulk. This part. This yeah. se- sequence in comic books is just amazing. So the Hulk throws a car at Batman. And so Batman's like, the only way I'm going to survive this is to jump through the one side of the car, do a perfect, like, arcing dive, <laughs> and come through the other end of this very small sedan. While busting out the window, like that <laughs> form... Right. Bursts through that glass like nothing. That's right. Yeah, that, that's and, the, that's the Starsky and Hutch car too. He throws the right. Starsky yeah. and Hutch car. It is a tiny. That's like a Pinto. 
Like, it's not a full-size car. How is he jumping through that? I, and then he grabs the Hulk's leg. Like, that's going to matter. <laughs> he's, like, yeah. he's like, let me bear hug your leg. Like a well, dog in heat. I, just, I love, like, how brutal this fight is compared to, like, the first fight they had, like, at, at Wayne Enterprise or whatever. Because, like, Batman kind of outsmarts him in the first fight, right? Like, he, he throws out this gas and, like, he's gonna, he knows it's gonna knock the Hulk out. But Hulk says, like, oh, like, it's not gonna knock me out if I can't breathe it. And then he, like, purposely kicks him as hard as he can in the solar plexus. I, like, a direct quote. I'm, I'm not an anatomy dude. But, like, kicks him there to, like, make Hulk draw in a breath. Like, makes him go, <gasps> like, that. And then, like, that's how he breathes in the gas to calm down. And then here, Hulk is just like, no, dude, like, I know your moves. I'm not gonna fall for this move twice. <laughs> and so it, it just becomes like such a desperate fight for Batman where like I'm sure he felt a little confident after the first mm. time and oh god that, that panel is so good and just like him leaping into the pose in the next panel oh, yeah. so, oh, so good yes yes all that, again, all that thinking and dialogue between the panel that's that's another thing like when you said there's so many words that was a, that was a thing for this they talked so the money. much here we go yeah. here comes the money you know what this that means Batman. let's see the Smiths I, I, is that Woo-hoo. the indie rock band? I don't know. Oh, that would be awesome. awesome. Yeah. They got oh, back together oh, just for this. Just for this. R-I-P. Morrissey, quit complaining about ham sandwiches. Just hey, for $50 <laughs> donation. Thank you so much, Smith. Sweet. I was going to say that. Thanks so much. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Donations are great. And everything goes to help support cancer research. That's right. You cannot snap away cancer. That's you right. can't. You yeah. have to work. You have to put in the he, time. He was, you have to support the live stream for the cure. Get out there. Donate. Come on. We still have, what, 20 minutes left, and you can get a sweet T-shirt. You, you guys don't understand how people. much. You, you can get this thongy thing. The he, wanted back. That, he wanted to get that gauntlet in so badly. You guys have no idea. And he finally did it. So I'm I so did. proud. So, so yes. uh, But George had a favorite moment, too, because this book is just chock full of, like, ridiculousness uh, that you could only get away with in, you know, late 70s, early 80s comic books. So, uh, George, we're talking about a pre-show. What was your other big favorite moment? My favorite moment is, like, the disguises. And, like, he doesn't do it once. He does it twice. Where he, There's one scene where he goes into a bar, the Black Swan Cafe, trying to find information about where the Joker is because he, he lost him and knows that, like, that's his ticket to finding Bruce. And so he is dressed up as, like, a homeless man. He just goes around and is, like, begging everyone for change. And he's got, like, this huge, huge, like, um... Or like fedora esque hat on, right? Like, uh, <laughs> right. and <laughs> it's really important. And yeah, you need the for, fedora for the, next, for the next scene. You know, he finally gets kicked out for harassing people at this bar, and then he just like literally rips a face off, and then it's just like Batman with his cow, and you realize he had to wear that big dumb hat <laughs> to cover up his ears, and it's just it's like so unsettling to see him like. It's like that scene in Face Off where Nick Cage is just like trying to simply say it's like you take his face off. And he literally, does. it's so unsettling, but so freaking funny. I laugh. And then he does it again later in the comic where he's dressed mm-hmm. up like an old man, you know, That's working right. with the Joker. And like that whole gaslighting scene, I didn't care for that very much. That Like I understand that that was like Batman's goals. But him, just like the logic in that scene, I didn't really get it. But then he rips off that old man's you didn't need again. to. Right. You didn't yeah. need to. My favorite moment is just Batman beating the Joker, being like, Joker, I'm disappointed in you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm not mad at you. I'm just disappointed. <laughs> All this power, you could do better. Right. And I, I did want to kind of throw that out to George real quickly. And to Mikey, because he's a big DC fan. Another reason why I love this book is because it kind of predates Emperor Joker. <laughs> by mm-hmm. like 20 years, right? Mm-hmm. Like everybody kind of knows, or, or you should know that in the early, the late 90s, early 2000s, there was a storyline where basically they gave Joker ultimate power and he became ultimate, you know. He stole it from Mr. Mixaplex, right? Yeah, or it, like the, yes. the, right. from the fifth dimension. Yeah. And uh, cool. he like r- runs roughshod over the entire universe and even Superman can't stop him. It was a huge crossover. Tons and tons of books. You <laughs> more money! <laughs> Wait, 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 Emperor Joker! Emperor Joker is just like, no, something's wrong. Two plus two does not equal fish. We're in the middle of a transition, (laughs) but one hundred dollars, Cassandra Lee. Thank you so much. Oh, very nice. Thank you. Thank you. you. Wonderful. Wonderful. But um, this again predates Emperor Joker by many, many years. Yet 
you didn't need a thousand books to tell a story about what would happen if Joker got ultimate power. It's it's, three pages and out. So what do you yeah. think? What do you think, George? As, so uh, so cool, man. It was like because there was like that one part where it was like Picasso, like um, expressionist painting, right? Where like like the actual world was changing, and so like it's just like I thought you were more of an artist, and like he actually like he, they went to like a, a Salvador Dali esque world. Like yeah, it was just yeah. so insane and imaginative. And again, like you're right, like the economy of this all happening in the span of what mm-hmm. three pages, and it's just like this would be a six issue miniseries because it's just like oh mm-hmm. we got to we got to explore the space of this idea and they're like nah screw it like we've already thrown two strikes like let's just throw them a slider right now like just just to see how they handle that like let's just wrap up this inning as fast as we can and it's so good and concise and weird and imaginative i i I loved it this book is really good i didn't want to like it like i said too many words but not the case at all really good good words good job lin ween you you did it I, you know, like I said, it's not it's not my favorite kind of vibe for for the things, but that's just because I my particular tastes was were really like at this time I was reading like GI Joe and then you know Transformers, but then like like 1986 was like the year my head exploded with with with, with comics, you know, because it was like I'm sorry, but you know Watchmen, <laughs> Dark Knight Returns, fake nerd, you know, yeah. that's right, Camelot 3000, like that. My my taste had moved to different, but anyway, um, it wins me over with the charm, like all of these crossovers do. Um, it's not as uh, it is like a Saturday morning cartoon, very much so, um, which is fun, which is the fun, and I wish they did that more often. There's so much partisanship now between the two. The two, I wish they just did these casual sort of. You know they they're they're meeting together for for no reason. Yeah, just, their you know, corporate daddies are too big time. They're not. Yeah, yeah but they sh- they should like they they like after the unfortunate passing of George Perez, they like reissued yeah. like a, a a reprint of like JLA Avengers, and all of that went towards like the the family of George Perez, right? Yeah, right, like yeah. I don't like I don't see why they don't just like once a year like put their swords down and just like do this either for creators in need or like you know like for the. Hero initiative, uh, like the hero initiative. Thank you for that, yeah. or for something like like what last year for the cure does. Just like a fundraiser, mm-hmm. where it's just like okay, like we can make X amount of dollars on this book because it turns out people really like the idea of crossovers. Like they they really do need to like put, like I said, just put their swords down and just yeah, put their put their heads together because it, oh, yeah. Yeah, no good reason not to. Supposed to be heroes, yeah, right, yeah, right. absolutely. And yeah. and they did they did a ton of these. Like they did a Batman Daredevil one. They like they did them in the nineties too. There was and most of the companies. Super, were Superman Silver Surfer one. That one's great. Yeah. 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 That was actually when this collection came out. This didn't come out initially. This was in the '90s when they teamed up again, which led to the Amalgam universe mm-hmm. with things like Dark Claw, Doctor Strange. Fate. And, that should have been my least favorite universe. Oh, I didn't like Doctor Strange. Fate was awesome, and that was Jose. Luis well, Garcia that was a good Lopez book. Was that was yeah. a good Jose book. Luis Garcia Lopez for yeah. Doctor Strange. Yeah. Fate. But no, it really upset me that they only wrote, like it said like next issue, and I got all excited, and there was no next issue. Yeah, it was. A and big the nice thing, thing was that all these folks were friends with each other back in the day, and like they had they would work at Marvel and then went to DC, or they went to D- from DC to Marvel. They were going back and forth. They knew all each other, you know, and it was it was a very collaborative process. Yeah. And so, and I thought, you know, if you look at some of the folks that worked on some of these crossovers in the early eighties and even in the nineties. Like there's some big name talent that, you know, had maybe Jose Jose. Luis Garcia Lopez. He was primarily a DC guy. Mm -hmm. Would he have drawn the Hulk otherwise? Probably not. But you look at this Hulk and you say, yeah, that would be the Hulk on on the lunchbox. Like he would have done the exact same thing for the Marvel characters. Like Mm -hmm. these are the definitive promotional versions of the Marvel characters. And everybody would have said, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. how you draw the yeah. hole, for sure. And by the way, if you are a big Jose Luis Garcia Lopez fan, there's supposed to be a calendar out next year that has all of the images from his the the Bible that he would use or DC use with his character guides. And so very cool. Yeah. Look for that next year. Thank and, you guys. Uh, we are that's almost, cool. ladies and gentlemen, to sixteen thousand dollars. Wow. Wow. So, uh, make it rain on these uh these beautiful, beautiful bastards for the last twelve minutes or so here while they're hanging out in here. Please that's right. Please, Remember please. everything goes towards cancer research. Absolutely. Yeah, anything, want- anything I could tell my wife to make me look more attractive will help me. I can be like, you know how much money I raised today? <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> look at these philanthropy muscles. Oh, I uh... <laughs> 
I'm curing cancer. Is that just order. what he has written, like, above his dick with an arrow pointing at it? Look at this philanthropy <laughs> muscle. Yes, it, it is. It is, but it's in shorthand because, I mean, come on. I was afraid I was afraid to say the word shit earlier, and you just come out and say that? God, I, I didn't I know. told everybody oh, that wow. it was an all-ages all ages sequence, so anyway. Oh, man. Oh, way to go. Oh. All right, so let's get to uh, let's get to ratings real quick. Uh, we need some time, so uh, we're going to say one out of four gamma guns. So the gamma gun played a huge full part in this. Although I again I don't know why. I mean it was just uh, something for the Joker to steal, I guess. Just a plot contrivance. Yeah, these guns. Let's start off with Mikey Wood. How many gamey guns you give in this? Oh book? my! Just because it's a special occasion, I'm going to say three. No, 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 no. Because like it is. It, I mean, for me, it's, it's super silly, but it's very charming. And and Jose Luis Garcia Lopez. Anything he touched, like he did Atari Force, he did a, like Cinder and Ash was a two issue, a four issue thing he did in the 90s. Beautiful, like everything he does is just absolutely beautiful. Um, so just for that, I would, re- you know, he could draw an entire comic about this horrible relationship I had in high school and I'd still buy it. Because- <laughs> <laughs> you know. All right, George, how many, uh, how many gamma guns are you giving it? I don't think anything is perfect, but like I want to give this four. Like I don't think that means it's like a, nice. I, don't, I don't think that means it's a perfect rating. Like I don't think it's a perfect comic, but I think if you consider it's objective, I think it just nails it. Like I think this is like a really fun, low key, casual meetup between two characters who, like you said, otherwise would have no reason whatsoever to hang out. And I said, Lenween, like for all the words there are in this book, it's incredibly brisk like it, it moves really quickly. And Jose Luis Garcia Lopez, like there's that one scene where they're fighting on like the the boat. Like the offshore, probably illegal research lab happening yes. in international <laughs> waters or whatever. Yeah. And there's like this original creature that shows up. I think it's like a like a dream form that the the shaper of worlds conjured up. And it's like this thing that's made out of dough that imprisons the Hulk like in his in his belly. And it's like such a one off dumb character that like shouldn't have been cool, but like looks amazing for like mm-hmm. basically just like a joke you can only use twice, right? Like in, in the panels that it appears in. Yeah. Uh, and it's just like the thought that goes into the smallest possible details of this book. Really impressive. This is this is a great book. Okay. Chad? There you go. Yeah, no, I I love it. I think it's tons of fun. And to see that Jose Luis Garcia Lopez artwork, that's great. And Len Wein, don't uh don't sell him short. He does have some uh flowery moments in there where he gets his prose in. Mm-hmm. And it's, mm-hmm. you know, you can tell he's having fun with this. And like, anytime you have a crossover, that's the most important thing. Is you don't want to spend too much time on the details. It doesn't matter. You want to throw these guys in, uh, you know, see how they interact, see how they bounce off each other. But I, I brought up earlier the Joker interactions, the Joker relationship with Batman, and the Joker trying to manipulate the Hulk. I mean, that was tons of fun too. I, I miss those days of that Joker that was a little more calculating, a little bit more cunning, as opposed to just absolute. <clears throat> crazy pants bonkers these are the idealized forms of these characters and you get batman you get hulk you get a batman and joker team up it's lots of fun with that said are there other crossovers that i, I appreciate more yeah that's first spider-man superman one. Oh, i love that one and then teen titans x-men i think that's that's the perfect comic book in my mind that walt simonson book there but so i'm gonna say 3.5 gamma guns nice. for the batman hulk I'm going to give this a four, uh, but that's not any surprise, because again, uh, this is one of my top ten. It's in my top ten favorite single issues of all time, Uh, just simply because, like, again, I I feel like when you have books with the verses, it shouldn't really be about Batman fighting the Hulk. Like, I mean, that's, you know, I'm not going to be one of these people that says, like, Batman's going to win every fight, and you give him Batman plus time equals win. Like, no, that doesn't work. Thank God. (laughs) <laughs> it doesn't work. Don't spend your time dealing with that. Make it about like the actual story, which honestly, even though like it's a little simplistic, I think there's a real story here. There's real stakes. There's real reasons for you know Batman and Hulk to team up. There's reasons why Batman and Joker should team up. There's reasons why Batman and Hulk should fight for a little bit. It all makes sense, and that comes from Len Wein and, mm-hmm. and his 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 writing. So uh, kudos to him and. The art is tremendous, and heck, I would give this book a four just for that scene of the Hulk throwing that car. Come on now, I have that as my wallpaper on my computer for like three years. It's uh, it's wonderful stuff, and like you should pick up this book. Uh, yeah. More than Superman, Spider Man, uh, I think that. 
plots. Mm, mm. I, I like this one. <laughs> and if you're interested in more Jose Luis Garcia Lopez on team ups, make sure that you're picking up what Superman and Wonder Woman. Oh, Superman versus Wonder Woman. Yeah, yeah where he, they fight mm-hmm. in DC. He did that mm-hmm. one with that classic cover with I think it's like Uncle Sam behind them yeah, or another something. Treasury edition. That's another great, great book if you can find. Mm-hmm. It's huge and it's beautiful. Yeah, and yeah, we didn't talk. Uh, Dick Giordano was on Inks and Embellishes, and he's known for his work with Neil Adams. Mm-hmm. And so you you see those moments sometimes in here too, where Batman's face gets that Neil Adams esque yeah. quality, and it's like. It's the Giordano influence, you know. Yeah, and 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 uh, Garcia Lopez's Hulk has a bit of a Bushima vibe to it. Yeah, yeah for, for sure. Like the head, yeah. the head, and stuff. So. He's just so classic. He captures yeah. the essence of those characters. Like that's why he did the DC marketing yeah. bibles. Like, yeah. yeah, you think about like eighties DC. Every image that you probably have of Superman or whatever is is Garcia Lopez. So right. also, just really quickly too. Just I, I know we're like really celebrating Jose Luis Garcia Lopez as we should. The dude mm-hmm. frequently has pages with seven panels on them and like they don't feel claustrophobic despite no. despite like I said all the words that Lenwin wrote and again they're not like heavy bogged mm-hmm. down narrative boxes or anything like that. And so just the fact that like able to cram so much without like me feeling like I'm being suffocated as I'm reading mm-hmm. it, that feels like a, a lost art and also just something that isn't done today, right? Like I feel like a lot of comics today are, you know, three to five panels per page max. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, just like waiting for a, like a, a page turn into a two page spread. Yeah. And it, just the economy of everything in this book is like it looks so effortless, but feels so meticulous. And that's mm-hmm. like it, it's just it's a really good book. You should read it. Yeah. It's really it's really good. <laughs> yes. If we haven't drove mm-hmm. that point home. 1981 was a good year for comic mm-hmm. books, movies. Beyonce. Songs, like yeah. And Beyonce. <laughs> Endless love. Yeah. Just put that on. Get yourself yes. some Hulk, Batman. Mikey brought up Beyonce. The world is better for 19. That's right. <laughs> the, the queen was born on that day. That's true. That's right. That's, That's true. true. All right. Do we have time for recommendations? Or? I, I, I mean, we have like two sure. minutes. We're gonna right. have, we can do it. it. All right. All right. So no, normally when we wrap up shows, we'd like to recommend other books that people can pick up. Uh, this one, the Batman versus the Hulk and the crossover collection can be kind of hard to find at this point because it's not printed anymore. But something you can find at your local comic shop is the Batman and Joker teaming up for the Deadly Duo. And this is done uh, with art and writing by Mark Silvestri, which you might remember from the 90s Image Boom or The Darkness with Jackie Estrada. But it is just beautiful, crazy pants art. Batman and the Joker team up. Uh, It's a multidimensional affair. You can probably track down all seven of the issues because it just wrapped up a little bit ago. But something modern to recommend. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, anybody else have a recommendation? I do not. I yeah. um, uh, real quick. I'm just going to recommend the 2017 Batman and the Shut. Yes. Let's hear this first. Here comes the money. We have the Menzies family donating twenty dollars. Thank you so nice. so much oh, for that nice. amazing donation. That's fabulous. Uh, we are Thank you. like what? literally teetering on the edge of sixteen thousand dollars, ladies Wonderful. and gentlemen. That's amazing. Thank you so much. Yeah. The, the, yeah, let's see if we can cross that. So, yeah, I'm, I'm recommending the 2017 uh, Batman The Shadow crossover, which was written by Scott Schneider and Steve Orlando and had artwork by Riley Rossmo, who I love. Um, and it is a modern take. There's a there's a, a murder in Gotham City, and Lamont Cranston is the culprit, but he's been dead for 50 years. So Batman has to figure out how that is. And it actually sort of blends in really well with the 80s DC run of uh, The Shadow uh, kicked into gear by Howard Chaykin and carried on by uh, Kyle Baker and, and 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 all those guys. So anyway, it's awesome. Next, George. I'm going to recommend the first crossover I ever read, which um, go you know diving in your dollar bins uh, wherever you are. Batman Captain America by John Byrne. That oh, the first that's one a good I read, one. And it's got one of the like one of the most iconic moments uh, I think in '90s comics where Joker realizes he's like working with red skull or whatever it's just like wait what he's like i'm a scumbag but like i draw the line at nazis like, yeah. like, yeah. man even even joker's like nah dude I, I don't mess with that which i yeah. like still i read that when i was 10 years old 12 years old and you know 20 years later i'm like god what a moment yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's good yeah, comic bookery. To, it feels like people need to be reminded that nazis are bad guys like yeah like, like, <laughs> There's an awful lot of people who seem well, to... Well, I mean, as, as soon as Call of Duty laugh. stopped doing World War II games, and then as soon as the Indiana Jones movie stopped coming out, it, it seems yeah. like everyone forgot, and we, yeah, yeah. we got to bring back Indiana Jones and Call yeah. of Duty World War II stuff. Yeah. All right, that is it. I hope you enjoyed that special show from us. 
which was also live streamed. Uh, look forward to next year doing it again. Hopefully I can join so that I'm not stuck in the basement with this smelly broken down Rama 3000. Need to get some WD-40. Anyways, we hope you enjoyed. Uh, come back next week. All of our shows can be found at www.lastcomicshoppodcast.com. We also have links to our social media. We've got Twitter polls, YouTube videos, a link to our merch store where you can get t-shirts, coffee mugs, tote bags. And while we are the Last Comic Shop Podcast, we don't want to be the last comic shop. So make sure you are supporting your local comic shop. Uh, you can find that at the comic shop locator dot com. Uh, maybe you can pick up Batman versus the Hulk or Batman and Joker or Batman and Captain America or Batman and Shadow or just Batman. I'm sure they might have a Batman book. That's it for this week. No dad joke from me, because while I am a dad, I tell good jokes. Thank you. Comic Shop was a 2023 Black Angus production.